Obtain roll call. Phyllis Hauser. Present. Daniel Wooten. Daniel Wooten. I'm sorry, some popped up on my screen. I'm present. <laughs> uh, uh, Ms. Ogmano. Here. Dr. Tanya Miles. I'm sure she'll jump in shortly. Uh, would everyone please uh, join me for a brief moment of silence? Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, Hauser. Second, Wilson. This has been moved by Mrs. Hauser, seconded by Mrs. Wilton. Uh, questions, additions? Does it have a, okay, I see it. Never mind. Okay. All in favor of um, approving said agenda? Uh, please let it be known by voice. Yes. Are yes. there any? Are, are there any no's? Agenda approved. Next, we'll turn it over to Mrs. Harris uh, for the uh, financial report. Good afternoon. Can y'all hear me? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma Financial reporting for uh, April 30th, 2021. <clears throat> Our bank accounts have been reconciled as of April 30th, 2021. Total cash in banks, $3,605,798.17. Total money market, $2,452,340.99. Total investments, $48,092.95. Grand total cash, cash equivalent and in investments, $6,106,232.11. Combined revenues, expenditures, and change in fund balance. For the month of April, total revenues, $2,993,841.47. Total expenditures, $2,394,000. $330.38. Revenues over expenditures for the month of April, $599,511.09. Year to date, total revenues, $20,208,560.96. Total expenditures, $17,647,000. Total other uh, fund sources and uses $16,705.80. Year to date, revenues over expenditures $2,578,006.21. Payroll for the month of April was $1,906,895.46. And the taxes we collected for the month of April was. Uh, two hundred twenty-nine thousand four hundred nine dollars and fifty-two cents. And the next sheet is just a comparative from month to month of your cash in the banks, your money market, revenues, expenditures, your gain or loss, fund balance for general fund, the total tax received, and the payroll for those different. Just comparing them for the different months. Okay. Uh, are there any questions uh, for Mrs. Harris? Mrs. Harris, I understand you under the weather a little bit. Thank <laughs> you for being the trooper for us today. Yes. Hope you feel better. Oh. Ms. Harris, was there anything you needed to bring to our attention? Not really, unless you just had some questions about the, the um, I don't really have anything because it's basically the same like expenditures that we've been having, like for CARES Act. We're still buying things from CARES Act and um, not really, we don't really have anything that, you know, that you should really, you know, we just still paying for uh, this month in April, we, we did pay for CNP, you know, the payroll, we passed through the money for the pay, for the payroll. But next month they were able to pay 
uh, their own payroll. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Dr. Williams, since she talked about the CARES Act, uh, you had said that you were gonna share the budget with us, with the board members since we apparently are not allowed to participate uh, with some of the decision-making processes. So do you have that ready for us to see? I don't have it right now. We're still going back and forth with the State Department. Um, so we have not gotten our final document yet. Um, the broad items that I shared with you all last month are still the same though. And I can send you everything that we've been sending the State Department. It's been quite a bit of um, communication going back and forth with the State Department on um, some of the items and needing clarification and so forth. I'd like to have that, please. Okay. Are there any uh, other questions? If not, is there a motion to accept the financial report? So moved, Hauser. Second, Wooten. It's been moved by Ms. Houser, seconded by Ms. Wooten. Questions, additions? If there are any objections, please let it be known by nay. I got one question. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, um, Ms. Houser, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Ms. Harris, um, do we have a contract with Neely Charter Service or is that just uh, whoever has the lowest bid for um, transportation? Neil is just one that uh, the school just basically, we don't have a contract. Well, they get contracts as they use him, but we don't have a, just a set contract with him. Okay. All right. That's it. All right. Are there any objections? If so, let it be known by nay. Here now, uh, financial report approved. Uh, the budget amendment, uh, Ms. Harris, uh, Budget amendment number two is just, um, this is just our cleanup that we have the last chance to try to get the budget, you know, like we need it. So it won't be any, uh, anything over like 10% for the function in the program, especially in federal. And this is where we try to clean up everything and just try to make some changes. So that's okay. the purpose of this. This is our final one for uh, FY. 2021 and it's due to the State Department by the 15th. And, and we have to approve oh. this or we have to uh, approve this? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ms. Wooden, you had so a What changes were made on this on this last amendment? Um, the only change, we, we just kind of like, we may have made like change some, um, how would I say it? Like if you had something in supplies and you needed in PD or something, we just changed it around on the budget. Like in like in title, if you had like more money in supplies, but you needed some in, in um PD in professional development, we just we had enough. No, I understand what what the process is. I'm asking for this last amendment, what was actually changed? Oh well, I have to go back through it and, and just let you know because it was a lot of things like it's entitled and everything because we did it one by one like federal. I would have to get that report to you. Okay, and you said this is due when. The 15th of this month. Of June? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So it's... Um, and also, I'm sorry, Mr. Moss. We, okay. we, we had to add some, you know, like any um, awards or something that we had that we didn't have on the first one. We also added some awards on there. So... You Ms. mean awards, you mean... Uh, Grants or something, right? Some uh, some money from the state that we had did not put on here on the first one. They okay. wanted us just to add this one. It wasn't a lot of uh, you know anything major, real major. Okay, so it was just routine reallocations. Yes, ma'am. That's what it's based okay. on. Yes, ma'am. But I can okay. see, I see your report though if you need it. I like one, please. Okay. All right. I send it to you. Is there, a is there a motion to accept the budget amendment too? So move. Second Hauser. Moved by Ms. Wooten, seconded by Ms. Hauser. Questions? Hearing none, if there are any objectives, please let it be known by no. 
Hear no objections. Uh, budget amendment approved. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the May 11, 2021 board meeting? So move, Miles. All right, Dr. Miles. And Miles. Second, Hauser. And move by Dr. Miles, second by Mrs. Hauser. Questions? Corrections? Hearing none, uh, if there are any objections, please let it be known by no. Since there are no objections, the minutes are approved. Um, is there a motion to, as uh, superintendent recommends the board to approve the resolution to close Knox Elementary School effective the end of the 2020, 2021 school year. Is there a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation? So moved, Hauser. Second, Miles. So moved by Mrs. Hauser, second by Dr. Miles. Questions, comments, concerns? Well, I, I have a concern. Yes, ma'am. You know, it, it bothers me that we keep closing these schools and leaving these eyesores in the community. But at the same time, we're closing schools, we're adding more positions. You say you close you say you're closing schools to save money. Well, let me let me supposedly we're closing schools to save money, but at the same time, we keep spending five hundred thousand dollars on this, three hundred thousand dollars on this right here. So we have to be better stewards of, of, of the money, you know, because it just, just doesn't sit well. And I want to be on the record for saying that you're closing two schools in the same area. And that should not have happened, two schools in the same area. So on the whole side of town, uh, in that little group of one of the poorest areas in Selma, you're closing, you have closed two schools now. And I'm very disappointed with this. You should have closed one of the other, not both of them. Thank you. One of those schools was a pre-K school, if I'm, I'm mistaken. It, before it was a pre-K school, it, it used to be uh, a regular elementary school. And it's a, it was a beautiful school. Okay, any other uh, comments or concerns before we have our vote? All right, uh, Dr. Miles, your vote? Yes. Ms. Hauser? Yes. Ms. Wooten? Yes. Ms. Omanu? No. And I am a yes. Resolution approved. Next, I'll turn it over to Dr. Williams for Team Selma Celebrations. Mr. Miles. Mr. Miles. Uh, yes. Yes. Before Dr. Williams gets started, is this being live streamed? No, it's being recorded and we're going to post, post the video up afterwards. Oh, okay. Why, we, we're not why? breaking the law or how many folks on this on this Zoom? Was the public invited into this Zoom? Well, according to the, the guidelines, we have to push out the, um, the summary of it um, and then we'll push the whole video of the entire meeting out um, after the board. Attorney Campbell, are we within Sunshine Law? Uh, does it seem like a closed meeting doing it this way? We had done this all several before. cities employee. Uh -huh. Attorney Campbell, are you on this call? I'm, I'm on the call. Uh, if you know, um, recall Governor I, um, Ivy had put out some special uh, meeting rules uh, for the pandemic, and I believe we are in line with uh, those rules. As long as this is posted and put out to the public, uh, the deadline on doing this is June uh, 6, I believe. So wow. we're almost to that point where we would have to completely go back to uh, our regular meetings. But right now, I believe that we're uh, on good standing ground. So, Attorney Kim, are you saying that we can have this meeting without the public, you know, being here with us. 
Uh, yes, that's what we have um, been doing. I'm not saying that we did it per se, but that's what we were allowed to do under the pandemic rules is as long as we were able to get a summary and get the information out quickly uh, to what happened, uh, uh, then it's allowable. Now, I do believe Selma has, for the most part, been putting this out on Facebook simultaneously. Uh, yes, but, uh, that, that was my reason for asking that question because I know every other meeting that we've had has been live streamed on Facebook at the same time the meeting was going on. So it's like, yes, the public was there. And yes, we had proof that that was taking place. I was just trying to make sure we were not... Um, Violating the sunshine law, but if you say we're good, I'm good. Let the meeting go on. We actually did miss a few meetings um, being live streamed. I think we, because um, I had some people calling me about it. So we we have missed some going that live. In person. Those were in person live. Those were in person meetings. When we went back in, those meetings were not live streamed because I got calls about those. But every face, every, every Zoom meeting we've had, we've gone public with it. But if yeah. it's an issue, if it's an issue, I understand. I was just trying to make sure we were not breaking a, but, a law but, or anything. But why aren't we uh, letting the public in on this? What? Why this mean different right here? But well, we've been doing it all along. Why, Dr. Williams, why did we uh, just put it on Facebook like we've always done? Well, to Ms. Hauser's point, there were a couple of meetings where we didn't. And, no, um, not, not, we're not worried about the other meetings. Why, why didn't we no particular reason. We just decided to record it and push it out. We'll still push it out through Facebook and on our YouTube channel. So why can we do it as we go along? That's what I want to know. What's the problem this time? Do you want me to go live now? Yes, ma'am. Well, actually, uh, Courtney Washington, you're the co-host. Can you can you do that from your computer? I don't, I'm, I'm on a different laptop and I don't have my Facebook um, connected to this. Yeah, I didn't ask the question to cause confusion. I was just trying to make sure. No, it's, it's, it's no confusion. Oh, okay, I just didn't, you know, want to make sure to hit this. <laughs> it's, it's, we can do at least yeah, no confusion on my part. Yeah, we're, we're fine. If she can push it out, that's fine. If not, we'll just continue the meeting. Okay. Um, Selma, we ready? Uh, turn it over to you, Dr. Williams. All right, so Team Selma Celebrations, um, we do have um, a number. The first one is the IC3 Master Certification and just want to um, congratulate um, um, our student, Marion, uh, for getting that IC3 certification and her, her teacher is there as well, Miss Bell. Um, and just really super proud of our scholars who, you know, despite the pandemic, were still able to move forward with um, excelling academically. Uh, so congratulations to her for that. Uh, we also want to congratulate our retirees. Um, and we did have a celebration with AEA. Um, I love the theme, School's Out Forever, and our retirees are listed there. And certainly thank them for their years of service and appreciate them um, for their commitment and dedication to Selma City Schools. Uh, we have another um, scholar celebration, and this is the Microsoft Office um, Specialist Certification. Um, and Amari Williams certified in Microsoft Office Specialist. And um, you can see the teacher there. Um, and just, again, uh, you know, our scholars do amazing things all the time, but to see them do it um, even in the midst of the certain uh, a celebration. Um, and then the next one is another IC3 certification for DeAndre Washington and I'm super proud of him as well. Uh, earlier uh, in the year, actually last month, we had our Amy's Awards and this is our Aim for Excellence District Awards and definitely want to congratulate our support staff uh, person of the year. We had a tie between Sonia Lewis of Knox Brittany Himes of R.B. Hudson STEAM Academy, Elisa Smiley, uh, who is our behavior interventionist, is our district support staff person of the year. Rookie teacher of the year is Daylon Harris from R.B. Hudson STEAM Academy. Um, our parent or guardian of the year, we also had a tie there with Ms. Sabrina Petway from Knox and Edna Savage from R.B. Hudson STEAM Academy. 
And new to the awards this year was the um, Superintendent's Excellence Award, uh, which uh, goes to Courtney Washington, our Community Engagement Specialist. And just wanted to celebrate her because she does such an amazing job of making sure we celebrate everyone else. And I just really appreciate the time and effort that she puts in her work to ensure that uh, we're telling our own story and doing a great job of doing so. Um, and many of you may have seen this on, in the news. Ms. Kimberly Summerlin, a third grade teacher at Payne, was chosen um, as the Alexandra, uh, Alexander Shannara Teacher of the Year for the month of April. And uh, she was chosen from 1,200 teachers statewide. And so her picture is on billboards and she also received a Visa gift card. So certainly want to congratulate her for um, her excellence and being selected for that. Um, we also had 250 scholars who um, were um, who obtained perfect attendance. And I don't know why my, my computer won't let me see the images, but we've got some amazing pictures if you get a chance later to check out Assembly. Uh, we had pizza parties for them. And, you know, there were some challenges with the pandemic that we all know, um, and especially with the remote learning piece, but we still had 250 scholars within our school system that did not miss a single day. Um, and we certainly appreciate the families for um, the support that they provided in making sure that we were able to, to have that happen. So congratulations to all of our schools and to our scholars for their perfect attendance. And those are our Team Selma celebrations. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, at this time, uh, we have uh, public com comments from uh, Attorney Rose Sanders, and I think I saw her on here. And if she is, if we could let her jump in. and um, I think she's still out. I, I know I remember letting her in earlier. I saw her on here. I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes ma'am. We, we're going to turn it over to you, Attorney. Sanders. Okay, what's my time limit? Uh, how much time do you need? <laughs> have a I good, need <laughs> okay, can I give you, I'll give you five minutes. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you again um, for allowing me. I thank you, uh, Mr. President, because as you know, I've been trying to get on um, the school board agenda since October of last year. And um, Ms. Miles, thank you also because I, 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 look, I let you know that I was having problems and finally I called the board chair and finally he arranged for me to come to this meeting. I raise that because if it would take me this long, an attorney to get on the on the agenda, I, I need y'all to just, to, I know it's the pandemic, but you need to revisit um, what difficulty would a single mother say in GWC have in trying to get on the agenda. So in spite of this pandemic, I think we gotta make it clear to the public, uh, especially our mothers and fathers of these children that that in spite of the difficulties in the technology, they are welcome. And I just want to respectfully disagree with my colleague about the openness of this meeting. I think you raised a good question about whether or not this was a meeting that should be open to the public, especially when you're closing a school. When you're closing a school, uh, it is even more imperative that the public is aware of the votes, who, who voted and why they voted. Um, I didn't come to say those things, but since I was on um, at the meeting when I heard my um, courageous board members raise these issues, it takes courage sometimes to raise issues that are not popular, but clearly uh, majority of black school board or all black school board should be very cognizant of the fact that a lot of people would be very concerned about the closing of the schools. And even though they might be closed for justifiable reasons, the input of the public is important. Now, let me go to the reasons why I actually be on the agenda. Um, at the beginning of the year, school year, the first reason why I asked to be on the agenda back in October, because I'm working with young people uh, in some marginalized communities, for example, GWC. Um, Ms. Boynton here with me. Yes. But um, a lot of young people from these communities did not have access to computers. And I took several of them to uh, the high school to enroll them. People were very cooperative. I want to make that clear. Uh, but I was told uh, that there was no guarantee of the availability of computers or uh, internet 
They gave them the computers, but there was no internet availability for the full year. A lot of these young people became discouraged and dropped out. I am so proud of those 200 young people with the perfect record, but they have parents with cars and computers and, 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 um, I, uh, I, what do you call it? I, <laughs> but unfortunately, children in marginalized communities and poverty communities don't have that access. So I wanted to ask the board to consider not failing those young people uh, who did not have perfect attendance, who actually fell off the wagon, stopped coming to the um, Zoom classes uh, because of their condition and their circumstances. The good news is starting July 15th, every child under uh, seven, will, uh, their parents will be getting $300 a month. Uh, children um, over seven, seven and over will get 250. According to the president, 40 million of our children will be bought out of poverty. Uh, but that does not account for this past year where many of them have been victimized by poverty. Another issue I was concerned about, I'm still concerned about it, is transportation. Um, I've never seen a white child walk to school. Never. And I've been here 50 years. And I know in the days of segregation, every child got a bus ride, even though they were segregated buses. And I know there are members of the board who support this transportation, but I've heard people say, well, they don't want it. You don't, you can't allow children to determine what they want. Uh, when we had the tracking movement here, um, a lot of people, we finally got rid of the tracking movement, but Dr. Jeannie o Oaks focused on Selma. And this is what she said. She said, you can't decide, children don't have the maturity to decide what curriculum they should take. Their brains are not developed. And therefore we need to decide what's best for them and give every child that opportunity. I say the same thing about transportation, that we know that every child has the right to transportation. I've noticed a child walk in, and I was focused on uh, the children at um, Hudson because the children from East Selma had to walk so far, eight, nine, 10 miles round trip. But I saw a young woman carrying heavy books, uh, leaving Selma High, uh, living uh, on the far end of where my office is. I gave her a ride. And so no race of people would allow their babies to walk to school. I wanna urge you to do whatever you can if Black lives matter, if Black children's lives matter, y'all, we got to require uh, with all the violence in Selma and the um, shooting at the hospital on the street, we need that transportation for our children. Uh, as I said, some of them are walking nine and 10 miles round trip to school. I think I got two minutes left. <laughs> um, Hank Sanders, Senator Sanders and I was in Tulsa uh, in the last two weeks. And I know y'all know about Tulsa. Unfortunately, most of our children don't one of the most prosperous communities in the world, black communities, uh, hospitals, schools, you name it, pharmacists, theaters, they had it all. But uh, you guys, the government bummed that community and destroyed it. And um, the school system refused to allow it to be taught in school. And therefore, a lot of the children didn't know uh, what happened in Tulsa 100 years ago. And I thought about it. Our children don't know what happened in Bloody Sunday just 50 years ago. It's not taught in school. And the fact is, we have people who are still alive, like Miss Boynton, who's sitting beside me. Uh, I have a book. This is a book written by uh, Linda Lowry. She, she lives right here. She was 15 years old when she was on the bridge on Bloody Sunday. Our children don't know about this. Uh, I have a book uh, written by the children at Clark School. When the history was taught, when my grandchild was there, she's 23 now. I don't know how many years ago. But they actually wrote poems about the history and the things they learned. I found this book. This book was written when my grandchild, who is, by the way, is on her way to law school. But she was like in the third or fourth grade at Clark School. So if we could do it then, we could do some of these things now. Um, Mayor, um, the, the, the school system in Perry County, Dr. Hurd tried his best to infuse Black history into that curriculum. Uh, unfortunately, when my husband was on the education committee, he was able to get some resources. After he was removed, uh, there were very few resources. But Dr. Hurd asked me to do what I could to infuse Black history into the Perry County school system. And if you talk to him, he'll tell you the children that took that Black history, when it was infused in those classes, they advanced. They advanced. And there's a study done by Harvard and the University of Pennsylvania that says when children know their history, that they are 
more likely to succeed. This is the book I did for Perry County. And along with it, I did a CD. And the CD uh, has a song for every era in history. And it's the children in Perry County, I'll show you their pictures, who actually sung their, the music on the CD is sung by the children in Perry County. So they learn their history through the arts and through the infusion process. And um, I just want to encourage the board. You are all black boy, you're not even majority black. There's so much violence in this community. So many kids dropping out because they don't know their value. They are, they are victims of white supremacy. And you hear the word all the time. It's, it's become our right to say white supremacy now. You notice President Biden is talking about systemic racism. They're talking about how can we reform the system so that our black children can know their value. How can you, how can they know their value if they don't know the history? Back in the 60s, there was a teacher, and I think a plan or something should be done for her. Uh, Margaret Moore was an English teacher at, at, at R.B. Hudson, yet she used that opportunity to teach that history. That's why those children were so inspired uh, at R.B. Hudson to join the movement, to join Dr. King, because they were in the streets fighting for voting rights before Dr. King came there because there were teachers like Margaret Moore who had the vision and the insight and the consciousness and the love uh, to make sure that those and, children and, and, and the Borgians, yeah, I mean the Borgians. She st they started it in the thirties and the forties. You're not on the agenda. I don't want them to cut okay. you off. <laughs> I know you're not right. on the agenda. Uh, okay, I, but I try to say it, but okay. Um, we we want to thank you for. Uh, we've got a kind of a lengthy agenda, and but uh, all of those points are, are well taken, and uh, you know we are. Um, uh, working toward the transportation issue and uh, you know we want to thank you for all you do for our system and and thank you for looking out for those students. What about the black history though? Are you a, you're an all black boy. At least y'all should teach the history of Bloody Sunday. Yes, yes. The I'm gonna have to I, that's a that's a superintendent's uh, uh, issue. I'll, I'll no, it's the over. board's issue. Yes, You can decide that. Yes, ma'am. I, one, one last point. All over the country, the white supremacists, you could hear the Trumpites are uh, saying, do not teach black history. So if they're going out of their way, if, they, if they're going out of the way not to teach it, don't you think we should be going out of our way to teach it? Because it clearly will have an impact on the excellence and the dropout rates in the school. I've been coming before this board for years and years. I just want to know when you're going to do something. That's all I want to know. It's all right to say, oh, we appreciate you coming, but Take action, my brothers and sisters. We I need will address that. We, yeah, well. And I do appreciate where the, everything that you're saying, the sentiment behind it, everything. And, um, you know, Linda Lowry has been to our schools. Um, I, I saw her reading to the babies at Clark uh, pre-pandemic um, and sharing her book. And that's happened on numerous occasions. That's and we not are, infusion. That's not infusion. That is Can not I, infusion. That's not curriculum to have a person just to come and give a speech, Mr. Superintendent. You know that. But if you will let me finish, and I only, I only brought her up because you brought her up. Um, her book up, so that's the only reason I mentioned her. But if you'll let me finish, uh, we are having discussions about an actual Black history curriculum um, and also looking at um, Clark has our Social Justice Academy and also School of Discovery at Selma High, um, and eventually looking at an anti-racist curriculum for the entire district, but um, certainly looking at where we can begin working with that as early as uh, the next school year, the upcoming school year. Uh, so that's, those are conversations that we've been having. Um, you know, during the, the pandemic, it was a little rough to get something like that started, but we're certainly moving forward with um, looking at what it would take to have um, true black history being taught, not the whitewashed black history, but true black history being taught. Right. Well, and also and curriculum. And, and part of that also has to be uh, professional learning for our teachers um, around anti-racism and around what it means to ensure that we have equity for all of our scholars. Um, so that, that work is definitely something that we are in the process of, of revisiting. And because like I said, we were looking at it pre-pandemic and now that we're um, moving forward with um, hopefully what will be close to a normal school year next year, that's, that's something that we absolutely want to ensure that our scholars have access to. And I agree with you completely. Completely, you know, it's one thing for them not to know about um, U.S. history, but 
I mean, by, by bottom line, they should know about our local history here in Selma. And we do lots of field trips and that sort of thing. And I, and I totally agree, one and done as far as author's visits and that sort of thing is not enough. It has to be infused in how we do school. And our goal is to um, have uh, Clark with the Social Justice Academy to be the model for that. Um, and, and then as we develop that curriculum as a year round curriculum, look at how we infuse that throughout all of our schools up to and including creating the, the grade level appropriate equivalents in the upper grades. Thank you, Ms. Superintendent. But I want you to know, I did take all these books to Clark a year before the pandemic and I never heard from her. But I, I like, I, I, I want you to know we're willing to work with you. Ms. Boynton is starting a Black History uh, class at We're willing to do whatever we can because we know it can impact the murder and the violence in our community. So thank you again. Yes, ma'am. Thank, uh, thank you. May I say something? Yes, Ms. Uh, uh, thank you, Attorney, for uh, sharing that with us. Uh, Dr. Williams, every time she comes, we have something positive to say, but there's no action no, taking no. place. So can this time, every month, uh, until school starts, tell us the progress that we are making towards providing children with transportation. Mm -hmm. Tell us the progress that we are making towards uh, putting Black history into our schools. Mm -hmm. And please tell us uh, the progress we're making toward uh, better ensuring that these children have the tools that they need. Because we don't know how the pandemic is going to uh, uh, pan out. They may have to go to virtual schools. I mean, do virtual uh, schooling uh, at home again. So we want to make sure everybody has what they need. And supply us with a resource a call or contact so if a child doesn't have the internet or something goes wrong at home they would we would know uh, our our plan as a system to help these children please let's just stop uh, telling an attorney every time she comes oh we're gonna do this we're gonna do this and nothing happens we already have transportation just put them on the buses we are the buses go all over town just make that happen for us. I think at the last board meeting, I actually told you, I said, a, a attorney, um, 4A comes every year and talks about this transportation. We hadn't done it yet. Mm -hmm. So, and, and uh, I think Mr. Peterson had said something about, uh, you know, we got the buses, we go to the hotel, we go to, you know, the children that are homeless can ride the bus. Make sure the parents, put it in our, put it in our handbook or something, make sure everybody knows how to do these things so that we can give them the help that they need. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you for um, everything, uh, Attorney uh, Sanders. Uh, this time we'll turn it back over <laughs> Mouse. to Dr. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of, this is quick and it's gonna be brief. Those conversations, I personally have had those conversations with Dr. Williams. And when I was in high school, black history was an elective. And what she said was, because we've had these conversations, she's trying to figure out how to fit it in as a curriculum. So I've certainly had those conversations with her um, based on a, a Zoom call we were in during the pandemic. So I don't know, you know what it's going to take to really implement it and infuse it in the system. But I, those conversations have been, we've had those conversations about getting it in as a curriculum. So I just wanted to just kind of say that. What, okay. what I'm, I'm saying okay. is every board meeting, give us an update of what we're doing to get these children transportation and about black oh. history. We don't okay. get some action, not just talk this time. Yes, ma'am. Well, let's move on to uh, the uh, superintendent's report. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I want to do an overview of the consent agenda first. Um, the Edmentum uh, contract, what you probably received in your packet was a three-year agreement, um, but we decided to go with the one-year agreement. And this is the curriculum that we'll use for our, um, or the platform rather, that, um, that includes curriculum that we'll use for Saints Virtual Academy. Um, and it will be paid from um, Easter to funds. Um, and this is again, a one-year contract. Um, 
And it does include a wide variety of courses, all of the core courses along with Alabama state standards, as well as a wide variety of courses, including um, CTE courses that our scholars will be able to um, engage in. Um, and just across all grade spans, of course, the Saints Virtual Academy will only be for grades 6, 12, but it does have course offerings um, for um, all grade spans. So Dr. Williams, this, this price tag, uh, $121,830. Is that going to be lower since you say you're going from three years it's, down to one not. year? Yes, ma'am. It's $41,610 for one year. Um, what you're looking at was for the three-year agreement, and for, for one year is $41,610. So do you have enough students so far? Uh, are we still enrolling students? Or? I think we were close to 50 um, the last I checked, but um, they're continuing to enroll and we'll continue to push it out. We've got uh, the entire summer to market it. Um, the applications have only been open for about a week right now. Um, and so we'll continue to push it out and to market it over the next um, few weeks. So Dr. Williams, if we don't get those, the, the number that I thought you had said you're looking at a number of 250. So That's we'll our, Yes, ma'am. That's our goal. So what happens if we don't get that number? Well, if we don't get that number, then we can still move forward. We'll have the, the program in place and the platform in place to move forward. And then we just have to make a decision as to whether or not we want to do it the following year or not. And that's why this contract is just for one year rather than for three years. Um, but we're going to continue with the recruiting that we're doing um, work to get um, at least 250, if not 300 scholars for it. Because if you say 50 students, you know, I, I'm visualizing that you don't have 50 students, you're just calling out a number. And I'm just very concerned that we're spending a lot of money on this and we don't have the numbers needed to participate. I'm finished. Uh, I'm gonna... <laughs> I think I was next. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yes, go um, I just had a quick question, kind of in line with Ms. O's question. Um, mm -hmm. Seeing as how we don't have the numbers for registration yet, what is the um, implementation timeline for, implement like, how long will it take to implement this program? When you say that, you mean to get Edmentum up and running? Yeah, like, what? once we agree to this, what's their timeline for getting it up and running and ready to go? So they can get it up and, and ready to run, uh, you know, in a short period of time, but it's two to three days of uh, professional learning for the teachers, and we're in the process of selecting teachers uh, for it as well. Um, and so this will be the beginning of the year and, and uh, mid-July uh, professional learning for teachers um, uh, who would be um, the staff for the particular um, classes that they're teaching. Uh, so in terms of the ed minimum side of it, it's not a, a long drawn out process for them to um, give us the site licenses that we need. And then of course, like I said, to train the teachers. And of course, Mr. Coleman will work with them from an infrastructure standpoint to ensure that they have the access that they need so that it will be a seamless um, upload and, uh, for the, the programs that we'll be using. And what's the deadline for enrollment? Uh, we're going to go through the summer. Um, we're not. We're actually not cutting it off. Um, you know, we're we're going to push it so that we can get it before the start of school. But much like any other school, you know, scholars will still be able to enroll even if school has already started. Um, so, you know, our goal is to, of course, um, wrap it up by the end of July. And we've only been. Um, it's only been open for about a um, a little over a week right now. And so, you know, our goal is to by the end of July. Um, to be at, at our goal, or at least to reassess where we are if we're not at our goal so that we can plan from there. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So I know um, with this virtual academy, it was the intent to create a call center. And we know that it takes 250 students to have a call center. So if this does not pan out, um, so what would, what, where would the virtual academy, what, what would that fall under? What school? Yeah, so um, 
right now we would look up absorbing a school within a school if, if we weren't able to get to 250. And we've looked at, you know, both sides, you know, looking optimistically, hey, we may get 350. Um, and looking in, in terms of what may actually happen if we don't, um, then because we've got the funding for FY20, move forward with our current teachers and staff, we still go, go forward with this year. And then we would um, look at absorbing it as a school within a school. Because I noticed on some of the personnel, some of the people being transferred to this virtual school. Mm -hmm. so, so we already do have a cost center. The state has given us a cost center a number um, for that. And so, but to your point, um, we, we get funding, you know, it's in arrears. And so it's only going to be funded um, based on the FY21 um, numbers, the ADM for FY21. How can they give us a call center on a school that we don't have because we don't have students for it? <laughs> that's a, a Josh or, or Ethan Taylor question because that's how it works. That's how it works when you create a new cost center, they give you the cost center and then you earn funding um, based on the students that enroll. Um, so, because we, he has already assigned a number for the cost center. So, so, you're, so you're saying that uh, Selma saying, I know that it was voted on to have this virtual academy, provided everything fell into place. Yeah. Um, Attorney Campbell, are you on? Attorney Campbell, am I right with the cost? I just don't want us to, to put the cart before the horse. I want to make sure that what we're doing is going to be done right. And I want to make sure that it's not going to cost us as a district anything. Right. Um, and, 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 and Dr. Mouse, I'm on, uh, but I didn't hear your question. My question was, I know that in order to, to develop a call center from the state, you have to have at least 250 students. And That's so Dr. Correct. Williams is saying that the state has developed a call, given her a call center number for the virtual Saints Academy, but she's saying we have 50 students. How is that possible? I, I don't know. I'm only familiar with it taking the 200, 250 students to uh, begin that cost center. So I've not, uh, and, and I hate to be ignorant, but I just not heard of it being done the way Dr. Williams has described it. So I can, I <laughs> um, I mean, Ethan Taylor broke it down for me, and he's the person at the State Department who's been our contact. And, you know, pre-pandemic, we were um, looking at a virtual school. And so we had many of these conversations um, about two years ago. Um, and so essentially, when you're ready to start a new school, you, you have to be issued a cost center on the front end. And then what you earn in terms of ADM happens um, during that, that initial year. And so in the event that we don't Okay. So Dr. Williams, Dr. Williams, so it sounds like if you don't, don't get those numbers during the first year, you will not be able to proceed with that cost center. Is that what he said? No, uh, let me finish. Uh, what he said was, and we could still proceed if we chose to, but we wouldn't earn the funding for it. And, and so what I'm saying is if that were the case, then we would absorb it as a school within a school. And so in other words, it would become a program rather than a school which would not require a cost center. Um, if we're able to achieve it, even just for that one year, uh, then at that point, um, the ATM would be in arrears, just like in schools, um, and it would be in the arrears um, based on this year's enrollment in terms of what we earn um, for our average daily membership. Okay, so, so Dr. Miles, in answer to your question, what it sounds like is you only have a number right now you will not have a actual cost center until you get those numbers up. And it uh, sounds like Dr. Williams, there's no time limit on how long you take to get the numbers for your cost center. So right now they just have a number. Okay, and I, and I guess my whole concern of it is, and like I say, I know this has been voted on, but I just wanna make sure that in, in us moving forward, Dr. Williams, that we're doing things right. Um, and I know that, uh, with 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 this academy, we're pulling from our brick and mortar. Um, and my major concern was for us to be assigning teachers over to a virtual academy that might not be able to, that might not even have enough students to, you know, happen. But like you say, 
uh, it could always go back to just being a program within a school. So, and and it has been great. He's uh, kind of side by side walking us through the the pros and cons, the do's and don'ts, the if thens, and that sort of thing. So. Yes, ma'am. We would absolutely just revert it to a program if, if that's what um, our numbers implied that we needed to do. So, Dr. Williams, say again, what's the, um, the, 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 the cutoff for registration? Registration will be ongoing, just like any school. Um, you know, but we're trying to, um, at some point um, around the second week of July, we'll um, do, we're going to continue to push it throughout the entire summer, but around the, the second week of July, uh, we'll set um, a soft deadline. But just like any other school, students will be able to enroll at any point. You know, just like with, you know, School of Discovery, there's no cutoff if a scholar wanted to attend that school. So there's no hard cutoff to say if you're not enrolled by this time that you can't um, enroll. Um, but we are going to really... Uh, promote it, market it, and so forth, so that we can get our enrollment as high as possible by the end of July. But Dr. Williams, where are those teachers going to come from? Because I was looking at this package, and these are elementary uh, people so far. And the you elementary know, was sixth grade only, um, and then you know we'll we'll um, if if we're having our own students who are shifting. Uh, from our brick and mortar schools to the virtual academy, then it's a simple shift where uh, basically teachers follow students. Teachers follow students. I don't understand that. What I'm saying is like, if somebody's taking geometry, do you have, how, we already uh, kind of a little shorthanded with, with uh, certified teachers and we have to get people and put them on the emergency certificate now. So how are we gonna have, find somebody to teach geometry if a child uh, wants to sit at home. How are we going to find somebody to, to teach that child mm -hmm. virtually if, if they have to take French, if they have to take, um, you know, an advanced English class? They may be on emergency cert also. I mean, a, a virtual teacher could have an emergency cert as well. And then we also have Access, which is the, pre, the free online um, platform that has teachers included that's um, part of the State Department's um, package. And so that's an option as well. I think this right here is going to be a, a more than we can handle in Salem because, you know, what's the purpose of closing the school when you turn around and doing all this? I don't understand. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? Um, please move on, Dr. Williams. Too. Alrighty. Um, next is, um, we've got two equipment removals. One is for Edgewood and one is for Knox. Um, and uh, basically um, for the Edgewood piece, it's um, broken and, and um, equipment that's not useful anymore, I mean, scrap metal and that type of thing. I'm skipping down a bit and for the Knox um, equipment removal. It's um, uh, very similar um, in terms of um, just outdated equipment. And so you can look at the specific items there. Um, hopping back up to the rhythm contract. Uh, this is a contract that provides evidence-based in tier one, and, um, two and three um, curriculum and data. It's an early warning system and it's actually funded by a grant from um, the State Department and it expands um, the Mental Health Matters uh, program that's part of the Alabama State Department of Education. Um, and Attorney Campbell did recommend that um, we reach back out to the company so that we can change some language in the contract that would tell that any legislation would have to happen in Texas. And I'll get with you on the exact um, language that I need to use in talking with our lead person from Rhythm. Um, but this has been grant funded and um, you know, we have a one year term with this particular grant uh, for 56.25. Um, and it is a K-12 program, and it does also provide continuous professional development for our teachers and staff um, that will be working um, with our scholars uh, with the Rhythm program. Mm -hmm. Dr. Williams, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I know um, in the packet it says the cost is fifty six twenty five mm -hmm. for year one, and I know you said there's a grant. So is this the out-of-pocket cost because of the grant? No, ma'am, that's, that's what the grant is actually paying. 
um, that's what the grant was for. It was explicitly for the exact dollar amount. Um, so we, we're not coming out of pocket at all um, for year one. And I don't know if, if the State Department is, is going to provide the grant funding moving forward, but um, that 5,600 is what the grant covers. So when it State says that the list price is 25,000, what is that for? Um, that, uh, that would be if it wasn't part of this particular program through the State Department of Ed. Okay, so that, okay, that's my question. So this program actually costs 25,000. Do we know what the cost for um, subsequent years would be? Um, offhand, I don't, um, I, can, I can find out, but right now this is grant funded um, and the State Department is actually just waiting on us to say yay or nay, uh, but I can find out if, um, you know, what the cost would be if we were to decide to use it in, in future years. And then my other question was, um, so would this be implemented in a similar way as Voyager and Ingenuity and iReady? Um, not necessarily. The purpose of it is so different for those. Um, this would be more used. Um, um, somebody say something. Oh. It's more for scholars. So the purpose of it is just a little bit different. Um, and so every, every teacher may not necessarily need to use this. It does have an early warning system and it does um, work with social and emotional learning. Um, and so um, we will target specific teachers who will be trained for it. Um, one of the things I liked about it was the real-time check-ins covering mental health and stress levels and that type of thing. Um, and so it would be something that every teacher would have access to, and we'll just, we'll train a team of teachers who will be, um, have more or less the train the trainer model uh, within the school. And then principals can decide, um, you know, how they want to explicitly use the program and, you know, which teachers are going to be the owners of the data that they're collecting um, and also um, how they're using the early warning system. So out of pocket for this year is zero dollars. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then um, off topic, I'm getting like several messages where people are saying they don't have the link and people are trying to get into the meeting. So, yeah, I was just wondering if we live stream to Facebook, were we able to get on there? No, we're not on Facebook. I okay. My computer, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm on a different um, computer and I just don't, I don't have um, Facebook connected to this one at all. From now on, let's let's make make sure we have to do another Zoom meeting that you make it accessible to the community. You're close, like like attorney said, you're close in the school and the, and the public doesn't even know about it because they they don't have access to the meeting. All right. All right. We'll post it. All right. The final thing on the the consent agenda is the organizational chart. I did share this with you all. This is added from the information. Um, that you all uh, received as hard copies. And I talked to attorney Campbell today and she did um, let me know that I did need to add this in uh, with the title changes and so forth. So do want to get board approval for the, the new org chart um, that would go in place uh, pending board approval on July 1st. And this is the same um, org chart that I shared with you all. Um, I believe it was last month, either last month or the month before. So those are the items um, for the consent agenda. Dr. Williams, what did you say changed on the org chart? Nothing changed on it. Um, um, I just, I, I, don't, I didn't say anything changed, I don't think. But nothing has changed on it since I shared it with you all the last time. I was saying the title changed because the title's changing, um, not from the org chart that I shared, shared with you, but from our current org chart. Yeah, that's what I said. All right, so I wanted to discuss with you guys, if you um, would, just about the mask mandate. Um, Let me ask you something uh, 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 right quick. So this lawn care service, we're not going to uh, vote on anything about that today? Uh, oh, you just doing, you just doing bids. All right, got okay, you just doing bids. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So just wanted to have a discussion about the current mask policy um, and just see how everybody feels about moving forward. Um, right now we do have a mask policy that's in place and we've been um, making sure that um, people are aware that masks are required for, when entering our buildings. I just wanted to have a discussion to see how you all 
um, feel about moving forward with um, the masks and, um, you know, in light of the, the fact that most people are getting vaccinated, numbers are way down, at what point do we do anything different? So I just really wanted to open up the floor to see where your thoughts were on that. Well, I think, um, Dr. Williams, that the mask mandate should um, stay in place. And I don't really know if the numbers are really down. Um, Cause I know we were having a, a discussion about, you know, at the Vaughn hospital, there are no, no, no beds, no room, nothing in the ER. Like people are being turned away from the Vaughn. And although they're not reporting any COVID numbers, you know, I just find that odd that the hospital is so full that they're turning people away and people are having to go to Montgomery to get treatment. And so I think that we need to remain vigilant um, in regards to the safety of our community. And I also had a question that kind of relates to mask mandate, but is a little different. Um, I have a concern about the size of our summer school class classes. Um, from what I've been told, I know we combine schools and I'm not sure why that was done, but people are saying that the classes are completely overcrowded. And I just think it's odd that we've gone from 12 to 15, you know, small class sizes to over 30 kids in classrooms. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm very concerned about that. And I just actually found out about that today. So I don't, I mean, I don't know how, I know the, the, the guidelines have changed, um, but I'm not sure if social distancing has been lifted. Has that been lifted? Yes, ma'am. Every been lifted. Yes, ma'am, it has. The governor's order for that um, expired. Um, and there are, right now for the state, um, and even for the city, because Mayor Perkins lifted it for the city as well, there are no numbers um, limitations or um, social distancing limitations. To your point about the class sizes, we do have a number of teachers that are on the board agenda for tonight um, that will help us alleviate some of the class size um, um, for our summer learning. And we'll continue to, to seek additional teachers as needed to reduce those class sizes. Um, uh, my opinion on the mass mandate is I feel like we need to keep it in place at least through December because we still need to try to make it through flu, flu season. Mm -hmm. um, we are still in the middle of a pandemic, regardless to what people think or what they say. COVID is still here. Numbers, like like Danielle just, Ms. Wooten just said, um, they're not reporting the numbers, but they're here. And although the governor has said what she said and whatever Mayor Perkins has done with the numbers as far as people grouping together, we as a board need to make sure that the people that we're in charge of are safe. So we might need to still follow what CDC is saying. And we do know that there's, if at all possible, you might not be doing six feet, but you can still put a three feet mandate in place. Um, we might not do the shields, but we need to ensure that we are doing everything humanly possible to keep these people safe. COVID is real, y'all. And, and so it's still here. Just because people are opening up cities and opening, it, they're, they're doing that because of the economy. But we have to think about the lives that we are in charge of. So I absolutely agree. And I even think those death shields should still be used. I mean, you know, we spent, I don't even know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. But for me, we need to continue to, to use those death shields and we need to continue social distancing. I mean, I, like I said, I'm, I, I really am concerned about that. Because I see that tomorrow we have a play date in basketball. I hope y'all have a plan to make sure that that gym is being sanitized, to make sure that those locker rooms are being sanitized between those people coming in. Now, I saw that on Facebook. That has nothing to do with this conversation. But since we are all here, because by myself, I'm just one voice. But when all five of us get together, we, you know, we're a group. So, Dr. Williams, if you will ensure that with that play date tomorrow that's taking place at Selma High School, things are in place to ensure that our children and the children that are coming into that gym are safe. And with that mask mandate, we need to hold it in place at least to December till we can make it through flu season. Okay, I got a and, question. And Dr. Williams. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead I, I just yeah, had yeah, one more question. Go ahead. Um, in regards to the teachers that are on the personnel report, have they already reported to work this week or are they pending reporting to work? 
Because I think, I'm, I mean, I'm almost positive I've seen some of the people that are on the list. Um, yeah, I may have reported to work pending board approval. I'd have to look at the list to, um, and, and get with our summer learning staff to differentiate between them. But you know, you're, not, you're not wrong. Some of them may have already reported to work. I want to say something. Uh, in regards to, to the COVID. After, afterwards. Um, it was, it's been brought to my attention that all the schools don't have that little, uh, those devices, those machines to check your temperature and all that when you walk in the door. I thought we were getting it for the entire system, you know, like they have at Selma High, the protocol they have at Selma High when you go in there. Can we get that, make sure that every school has that? We are getting more, um, and if you're talking about the ones that are tied to metal detectors, we have prioritized Selma High and R.B. Hudson for those. Um, and you know, we can look at our funding and see um, how cost effective it would be to do it at every site, but temperature checks are happening at every site. But we need to get, get those, those devices. Um, and and um, you know, it concerns me that when it comes to the uh, a situation like that, you want to count pennies but other things you throw out you know what you want over here I got it over here you know that kind of situation so let's let's invest in our children and get, get those devices for every school I'm with Miss O on that because right now we have a lot of problems in seven C but when is that one of we have Esther's one two three these people are throwing money at us so please let's make sure that you know we are taking that S those ESSA funds and um providing the health and wellness piece. I'm not muted. Ms. Howler, oh. go ahead. Go ahead. Thank yeah. you. Guys. So, and this is back, and I agree with um, Dr. Miles and, and Mrs. Fulton about the mask mandate and all, but I also heard, um, well, first of all, I'm going to say that I am, we do have air purifiers at each school, correct? Yes, ma'am. And in okay. every classroom, and and I'm, and office. That, that's, that's a big deal for me. But secondly, I heard, and I don't know if this is true, that there is a big, um, that we're renting out or loaning out or the, um, the auditorium and cafeteria are gonna be used this weekend for a funeral? Is um, that? I have, a request. I have not approved any requests, but I did have someone send me an email and I did um, forward that information on to Mr. Peterson and his team so they could go through the process of the facility request form. That was yesterday, or I believe it may have been Sunday. It was either Sunday or Monday. And I'm not sure that they followed through on it. I have not seen anything additional, but I've not approved anything yet. But there was a request. But that is that what I saw. It's for a funeral. You know, most funerals have been graveside. Um, that might be a pretty large space. I mean, a large crowd to be occupying that space. Um, we were, if that's the case, and you know, I'm not trying to knock anything. It's just that I didn't know it. I heard about it. So that too is a concern as it relates to COVID still being alive and well. So we might want to really, really look into that and consider, um, give that some serious thought before we approve that. So, so, so I, I guess the question, um, maybe Dr. Williams, will you uh, present us a, uh, you know, maybe a couple of options on the mask mandate and we can officially vote on that at next meeting. Well, I, I don't know that I, I really wanted to have the discussion because if we, if, if, what I think I'm hearing is that we just need to stay put where we are. Um, yeah, because right I, now I we have a mask mandate that's right, right. robust. And if we want to just stay where we are, then I don't, I don't think that it would require anything different right now. I just wanted yeah. to just kind of get a feel where everybody was just to see if we wanted to do anything before the start of the school year or not. And if not, then we can wait until um, in the fall and to Dr. Miles' point, look at maybe, uh, maybe by the start of the school year, look at how we might uh, phase our way out of it um, sometime in the latter part of the semester or even the second semester of the school year. I think that's safe. I think that's safe to say. So I, I, I understand that about the mask mandate, um, but what are we going to do about summer school, like immediately? I guess we're going to vote on this agenda tonight to see if we can get some teachers. Is that is that the solution, Dr. Williams? That's part of it. I mean, those the teachers that are on the agenda will help, but we are still seeking some additional teachers as well. Um, oh. and, 
Mm -hmm. Ms. Wooten, if you want to talk to me about some specifics, um, you know, when we're done, I mean, I can, I can look at, because I do know that there were some classrooms that we were splitting even today because we did get some additional teachers. Uh, what ended up happening is we had a lot of scholars who did um, enroll or register ahead of time, and then we had uh, quite a few who showed up without registering. And um, we're trying to accommodate as many as we can, whether they registered or not. Um, and that's, that's kind of where we are now, just trying to make sure we can accommodate for them. And so, and it has created some um, larger classrooms than what we would like to see in a number of, um, of grade levels. That's yeah, 30 children is too big. Let's, let's just we, try to work through that. I mean, that's, Dr. Williams, did you, uh, well, were there any teachers that applied and, and didn't get the job that we could go back and uh, hire them? I can check. Um, I know we were we were pretty uh, liberal in terms of who we were um, because we 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 almost need them more than they need us. <laughs> but I could definitely check to see if there were any that um, that we did not pick up already. Uh, yeah, I, I told you. We, I told you numbers weren't going to be a problem. You know, I understand Montgomery. Montgomery had what twelve thousand students in summer school. Yeah, so, they're doing so, the so same that thing, leads right? to my. I'm sorry. That leads sorry. to my next question. I know we talked about it, um, Dr. Williams, a few weeks ago about the number of students and if we were really pushing all of our students um, to get into summer school, given that, you know, we've been in the pandemic for the last year. Do we know the total number of students that are registered for summer school? Um, I believe we uh, landed at a, a close to 850 today. Out of 3,000? Mm -hmm. Out of what? Well, we've got under 3,000, but yes, ma'am. Um, and I did just get confirmation that every teacher who applied is employed. Um, and so the teachers that we're seeking are um, those who, who, who had not originally applied. So we are still certainly seeking additional teachers, but every teacher who uh, originally applied has been employed. So do you yeah. think that people did not apply because, you know, all the schools weren't open? I think people are just burn out. They um, as well. Yeah. I mean, just some people just don't want to teach summer school. You know, that's what I okay. heard. I heard that a lot of people um uh, just refuse to apply because they were burned out, and some of them just don't like the way they're being treated. And I well, addressed I, I, this. I, 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 I've yeah, addressed well, I just, this with Dr. Williams about uh, I, I uh, teacher retention. That's what as, we really need to work on and sell. As a, as a former teacher, I didn't teach summer school. I just didn't want to teach it. So. I, but I, do let's, think, let's um, okay. I have one last thing. I do right. think um, in regards to the number of students in summer school, you know, our thing is to try to encourage and promote our students to get enrolled in summer school because right. we know that, you know, they desperately need it. Um, but at the same time, you know, I've had parents calling me and texting me all day long about these class sizes. Um, you know, some people are saying it's 36 kids in their students class and they're not sending them back until it's not 36 kids anymore. Okay. We're working on it. Let's, let's continue to work, work those numbers, try to work those numbers down. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Other thing for discussion is the um, long care. Um, right now it is out for bid and um, Mr. Peterson has proposed that instead of getting one contractor that we look at splitting the district into two and basically in half and possibly having two contractors. Um, in other words, pushing mm -hmm. it back out. Um, Put this in my purse I'll be looking for it. And, um, if someone's on, if someone's on a call, please mute. If you. One of our challenges has been that the the contractor does have sometimes has a difficult time uh, getting around to all of the sites. Um, is, it, who, is that who, Dr. Ford? Whoever's yeah. on, please mute. Everyone, please mute. <laughs> um, Anyway, uh, one of the challenges has been, um, and he described it perfectly, if you're at the end of that rotation, and oftentimes by the time they got to your particular site, um, your you know, grass was overgrown and it was certainly um, not the best case scenario. So um, we're, we're looking at uh, pushing it back out. Um, and uh, uh, Mr. Peterson is, is here, I believe. Um, so if you've got any 
questions for him about that, then um, we would like to hear from you because the, what happened is with the initial bid is all of the bids came up, came back higher um, than the amount that we were looking for. Um, and um, we could, of course, still go with the lowest bid, but the concern is still making sure that we're getting the quality uh, that we're looking for for all of our sites um, in, in terms of um, that rotation happening on a um, biweekly or whatever the, um, the rotation time frame is. So I just wanted to really push that out to you all. I know I, I mentioned to you in an update that we were in the bid process, and this is just an additional update to let you know we're still in the bid process. Uh, because we weren't um, really happy with the initial um, um, bidders, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, and de definitely want to um, look at how we move forward from here. And then, Dr. Williams, okay. also, you know, the people, the company that we had this, this past time or a couple of years, you know, they have been uh, connected to the court system. And it's not consistency, you know, when they do their time, it's another crew to come that comes in. And I was and I looked at some of those yards. Some of them weren't weren't um, the quality that we usually have. So, you know, I know you're gonna bid and all, but you need to look at, at that factor too. Cause uh with that group, they were coming in and out. You know, one group is there one month and the next month it's a whole different group. So that's one of the problems that we had with our taking care of the lawn and uh, not blowing the grass off the sidewalk and doing some other little things that, you know, you would come with uh, lawn care. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Williams, I had a suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how the solicitation of the RFP went out, but you could do a multiple award contract where you um, basically ask, ask the bidders to bid. Each school could be its own separate line item and they mm -hmm. could bid on each school and then you award it to the vendor or the contractor that had the lowest price per school. You know what I mean? So that way you're not lumping it all together. Mm -hmm. um, in, that, in that scenario, are you saying we'd have um, a different person for each school or for each site or would we, um, would, would we just take the lowest bid overall and move forward with that for all sites. No, I'm saying so that you can get some competition going. So okay. somebody might be at, and I'm just gonna throw out a weird number. Somebody might be at 20 on Edgewood mm -hmm. and then they might right. be at 30 on Payne, but then you had another person that be at 20 on Payne. So you will award the lowest bidder for each line item. And you know, one company might have the lowest bid for each school and you might award, you know, every line item to that person. But mm -hmm. it kind of shakes up the competition a little. I like the and idea. it gives you the opportunity. Because mm -hmm. you might have you might have one company that that they, they wouldn't be able to 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 do you know eight schools, but they might be able to accommodate two schools, so they could be for right. those two schools. Yeah, and I like that. The problem is the capacity. To your point, that's that is. But I, I like the idea of, of generating competition. Um, the capacity would just be what we'd have to um, just make sure we double check. Dr. Miles had a question. I think Dr. Miles. Dr. Yes, Miles. Sir, I do, I do have a question. Dr. Williams, um, you and I, we've had a conversation about the lawn care. Mm -hmm. um, did y'all ever look into purchasing some zero turns and some equipment that our maintenance guys could, could um, maybe maintain our properties? We have not yet, um, because I know we would, we would likely need to um, really look at our staffing too and who's able to do that. And so uh, my thoughts were get through an, another cycle of this in terms of having a contract to do it. And then um, perhaps that be the way we, we handle it moving forward after this, initial, after this particular um, round. Um, we, we, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to get it done now. And we definitely don't have the, the manpower to do it right now. Yeah, we're shorthand. Dr. Williams, I have a question. To piggyback on Dr. Miles' idea, I think that's actually an excellent idea. And my question is, what was the cost that we paid for our last um, lawn maintenance contract? Um, I believe it was $2,800 per, um, per cycle. Um, and a cycle might be every week or every two weeks, just depending on how often they did it. Um, and right now we're doing $3,000 per cycle and our lowest bid um, came in at um, 
I believe it was 4,500 um, per cycle. So what would the annual cost be though? It depends on how many cuts they made. Um, and, I, and I don't have that number in front of me to know what, what we've paid annually. I can look that up and get back with you. And so I, you say it's about- I understand what y'all are saying, but you know, manpower, you, you know, people, it's hard enough- Well, I'm getting at the point. Work. Let's just say if we spend 30,000 a year on this line contract, I don't know what the number is, but let's just say it's 30,000. You don't think it's that much, Dr. Miles? More than that. It's more than that because the, the the company that we had prior to this last company that just left, they were almost at a hundred thousand dollars, and that's when. But we see, my out. point is, with a hundred thousand dollars, that's you can almost buy some zero turns. Right, you can buy zero turns, and that's at least three um, salaries. And so, and if you, you have can have to, a whole lawn care team off that hundred thousand dollars, and they can cut our. I mean, we only have what. Uh, Seven buildings now. How many? I mean, they can cut seven schools in uh, once a week. <laughs> I mean, I don't you think know, they're they're be that good. Good. you probably would have to hire more people because the maintenance staff is already overwhelmed and short staff. So I want to expect them to to take care of maintenance and cut your. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's team. enough money to hire a whole team. Okay, that's only right. on here. Okay. So, also, um, yeah, I guess that'll cover the theft too, because you know we have to be able to house those um, that equipment. So yeah, makes I just sense. want I, I just want I just want to know where you're gonna get the bodies from. I mean, it's yeah, hard it's, enough to it's hard enough to find people to work. It's you know? really, Mr. Miles, all in the scheduling of the maintenance crew. It can be done, and I know it can be done because it's it being done. Be done, didn't um, it? It's all in the scheduling of the maintenance crew. So you can say we have 11 maintenance guys. Well, we're going to take two of those guys and we're going to let those guys work on cutting grass this day, this week. Then it's all in the scheduling. It can be done economically. <laughs> because where does the grass cutting come from, Dr. Williams? Does that come off general fund? It, it comes out of a, the maintenance pot of um, general fund. Local. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah, the, the shark yeah, after the bed is yes. Yeah, we don't we don't <laughs> have a few maintenance people. We don't even have that many maintenance people in cell. It, 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 I, I, do we use our maintenance people as bus drivers also? Yes, yeah, some of them are bus drivers. <laughs> well, let's 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 just try to. Yeah, let's just, let's why, think it's only four. Try, look, we can't. Let's try to let them try to figure this out and maybe. Uh, crunch the numbers to see what it will cost, you know, to hire or to schedule some people to do that. I mean, because uh, we can go on and on night, all night trying to figure this out right now, so. And I just wanted to let you all know why we hadn't brought a, a bidder to you. We were, uh, the plan was to push it back out there and um, we'll definitely share this conversation with Mr. Peterson and we'll look at the feasibility of, of moving forward, um, you know, with, with some, some staff. Um, the final item on my superintendent's report is the um, Selma Safe Community Alliance. And you all know that um, a couple of months ago, we did have a, um, oh, there's nothing here. <laughs> oh, well, I can't pick, do the picture. Um, was that the flyer, Courtney? I, I'm not sure why um, my computer won't allow me to, to see the images. I just wanted to let you know that we're, we're continuing to meet with um, Mayor Perkins and um, Police Chief and, and just to work to ensure that we've got some structures in place uh, to ensure um, safety within the community. And we're going to have another large meeting. And if you all can make it, it's going to be um, next Monday at 1.30 at Selma High School. Um, this will be similar to the large meeting that we had when we did the press conference back in April. Um, and just to give an update on what the smaller group has been doing in, in the meantime, and also share the identified areas of um, of concern that were actually uh, lifted up from that meeting in April um, and then uh, give people an opportunity to provide input and feedback and um, actually to work with um, one or more of the, the committee groups that we'll be sharing. Um, and it's, it's, it includes the um, 
safety and crime, of course, um, and it includes um, quality of life, economic development, um, parental involvement and family engagement, um, as well as um, looking at mental health um, and, and other supports that we can provide from within the community. So that will be on uh, June 14th um, at Selma High School. And Dr. Williams, you know, it's, it's, I'm glad you all are doing this, but I don't want this just to be for uh, cuteness and just for a show, because if I one bullet up uh, in up in Selma High and you had a press conference, they shoot all the time in my neighborhood, all the time. I have to be in the house when it gets dark. No press conference about that. I'm disappointed with, with the mayor and, uh, you know, that little group right there. You, you did this big show, but here we duck it almost every night for gunshots and nobody having a press conference. Nobody talking about it. You don't even hear police sirens. That's so let's that. not do stuff for a show. Let's do that's stuff that's meaningful that has an impact on this, this community because people are still leaving. That's leaving a, them. That's a city issue, though. Well. I mean, I know she got the mayor right there with her. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's jump on this. This is a community issue. Community period. issue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just not a self city schools issue. It's a community. But she, she, she's bringing but, the mayor in, having a safe it, group. You can't take care of the school without taking care of the community. I don't understand your your, your rationale. Well, we're saying, I mean, it's almost like you're saying this, this is a, a community alliance. It's, she was just reporting on the community I, alliance. I know what, what she's reporting on, but I'm still saying that you know, do more. We don't we don't need a show. We don't need a press conference for a show. They have you know how many times they have been shooting no over here since that uh, incident at Sam High. But it was a big press conference by then. Nothing over here. It sound like cannons. I don't know what kind of guns sound like cannons. It don't even sound pop, 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 pop. Like like it used to hear is boom, boom, boom. So uh, do since yeah. you have a mayor right there. It, whatever happens in the community comes into the schools, Mr. Moss, and you know that. I understand. Is there a motion to... Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. So, Miles. Second. second Hauser. It's been moved by Dr. Miles, seconded by Ms. Hauser. Are there any set asides? All right. Um, we'll take a voice vote. Ms. Hauser? Yes. Dr. Miles? Yes. Ms. Wooten? I'm sorry, Mr. Miles. Is, is it too late for me to do a set aside? Uh, Attorney Campbell. Uh, I just have a question about one of the items. Uh, um, I think it might be. Uh, we can, somebody can uh, uh, take that motion back. For the sake, we can amend it. Okay, sir. Miles. I think I see what I think I see what Ms. Wooden is talking about. Okay. Um, are you going to amend your attorney motion? Campbell, are we, what do we need to do, Attorney Campbell? Is she on here? Muted. She's muted. You're muted, Attorney Campbell. You're muted. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, if I heard the question right, uh, can someone uh, amend their motion? And yes, they can. Okay. Dr. Miles. I think Mr. you made the motion. Doc, Mr. Miles, Miles, I amend my motion to um, for the consent agenda because we had a question that Ms. Wooten had. Okay. All right. uh, okay. Can I set aside? Can yes. I set aside the organizational chart? Okay. The organizational chart not on my agenda. It's on the. Um, do we have separate, different agendas? It's on the screen. It's on the screen. Yeah, we do have separate. So the agenda that y'all sent to my house is different from what we're dealing with. 
Okay. So since we're setting that aside, Mr. Moss, number one, okay, never mind. Never mind. Okay, so uh, the set aside is uh, number five. I'm sorry, one, two, three, four. Well, yes. Five. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. So, is there? A, what is your motion to approve? I the, that we approve the consent agenda, setting aside number five. Okay. Second. Uh, is that a second. All right. Been moved by Dr. Miles, second by Ms. Hauser to approve the agenda with a set aside number five. Ms. Hauser, where your vote? Yes. Dr. Miles. Yes. Uh, Ms. Wu? Yes. Ms. Obamanu? Yes. And uh, I am a yes. Is there a motion to approve the organizational chart? So moved. Second. Been moved by Dr. Miles, seconded by Ms. Howell. All right. Questions? Yes, I just had a quick question. Mm -hmm. Dr. Williams, for the secondary education and elementary education um, directors, I know on the org chart, the elementary principals and the secondary principals report to these positions. Mm -hmm. So are they going to be considered their direct supervisor? Um, yes, but not necessarily their evaluator. Um, Dr. Ford and I will still be um, in the evaluation um, piece for that. Any other questions? Y'all will be the primary and the secondary, or y'all will be the primary? Yeah. This, this, uh... Dr. Mel, they're going to go through, you know, the principal supervisor certification that we did. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to go through that. And so for year one, we will be the primary and secondary. And the goal is to ultimately um, phase them in to be either primary or secondary for um, the principals within their charge. But they will still be the, the direct reports in terms of um, supports. Uh, so, you know, like with me, I have a concern because on one position, you have to have so many years of uh, uh, experience as an uh, administrator, principal. In one position, you don't have to have that. I don't understand uh, how you can be over principals and you've never been a principal. So that's, that's my concern right there. You 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 change the you change the requirements and it just had a little to me it has a little appearance that you modified it just so this person can qualify for the job. Why they why both of them didn't need experience? Why, why you can be over elementary and you have to have experience as a principal, but you can be over secondary and you don't have to have experience as a principal. They both require administrative experience. No, I'm saying um, experience as a principal. That administrative experience, that doesn't necessarily mean you are a principal. Mm -hmm. Well, you all approved the board, um, and I'm sorry, the job descriptions last month. That was just an oversight, you know, and I get tired of trying to just always catch stuff like that, you know, just tell us. Well, are there any other questions? Are we ready for the vote? Ms. Hauser? Yes. Ms. Wooten? Yes. Ms. Dr. Miles? Yes. Ms. Omano? No. And I'm a yes, uh, approved. Uh, old business. 12-month assistant principal, dean of student salary mix. Uh, can you click on that, Dr. Williams? I think. Yeah, so um, we had a, a typo where we did not have the slash um, where it differentiate from, from the position in terms of high school assistant principal slash dean of students. And I do know the question came up, why can't it be 11 months? But the job description that was approved was a 12-month job description. And so this is the salary schedule to match the job description that was approved at the previous board meeting. So Dr. Williams, um, is Ms. Harris on the call still? Because I think what I requested in the last board meeting 
was for her to provide us um, this proposed salary schedule in comparison to what we currently have in place. Yeah, and the only difference is just it's adding the appropriate amount of time from, for an example, if it was a 10 month position, it's just adding the additional um, two months um, for whatever um, current job descriptions that we might have that were either 10 or 11 months. That's basically so what that's basically what what it was that um there were eleven months and there were two hundred twenty five days, and this position is a two hundred and forty days. So we just basically added the other fifteen days to it. Okay, and in regards to um, and I, I actually am still confused. <laughs> I know we had a conversation last month about this says high school assistant principal slash dean of students. So we're saying a dean of students is equivalent to a high school assistant principal. Yes, a dean of students is a high school assistant principal essentially, and, and it just has specific responsibilities um, around discipline and at risk and um, student support services. And so with all of our current assistant principals, they're not going to fall on this salary schedule. Is that correct? If they're high school, they will. If they're 12 months, they will. This is a new for um, any any high school 12 month assistant principal. If they're 11 month or already on a different high, um, a different pay scale, then no, ma'am, they won't. But if they if we hired anyone as a 12 month assistant principal, then they would fall under this. But for our current um, who are, are 10 or 11 month, then they would stay um, on that same salary schedule that they're currently on. But with currently, we don't have any 12 month assistant principals. So this yeah. position would be the only one on this salary schedule. Yes, ma'am. Right. So why is it why why is it that we'd have one assistant principal on a 12 month and another one on 11 month? That was the request of the, the principal in terms of how this position will be utilized throughout the year and including the summer for summer programming. Um, and it was also part of the, the, the job description that was approved was for a 12 month position um, for, for this particular role. So we're getting ready, just like I said last month, we're getting ready to hire an assistant principal with an extra name. That was that's what I was saying last month. Y'all saying y'all are saying dean of dean of students slash assistant principal. So the dean of students is the fancy name for the new assistant principal. That that was my question last month. From my understanding, I thought we were going to make the uh, the high school assistant principals 12 months. And then they were going to have also hire dean of students. And this is what I thought this was from, you know. And that was part of the discussion, Mrs. Harris, was, um, and that was um, per Mr. Um, Pritchett's request that he needed all of his assistant principals um, to be 12 months. But unless that's board approved, then... Um, you know, that would be an, an additional board action to make them go from um, their 11 month status um, to that 12 month status, because right now they are 11 month. So, you know, we've had a situation like this before where a person went from 11 months to 12 months and did not get an additional pay. So uh, is that gonna happen in this case? Cause see, uh, what you do for one person, you need to do it for all because you always preach the word equity, but it does not exist in Selma City Schools. Who, you know, who, who went from, someone went from 11? I'll tell you about it. I'll call you and tell you about it. My question, <clears throat> my question, Dr. Williams, is um, how many assistant principal units are we given at the high school according to our state allocation? Um, I believe it's one and a half. It might be two, depending on, on where our numbers fall. Um, so right now we have it's one and a half. We do one and a half, and then the other half of the assistant principal come from that from Selma High's title money. So, okay, so so right now we have Mr. Pritchard and Clo Coach Glover as the principal and assistant principal at Selma High School. Yes, ma'am. Right, and you're looking to hire this assistant principal slash dean of students at the high school, this one person, right? 
Right now, we're just looking to approve the job description and the salary schedule, and then because I'm not recommending anybody for the position tonight. So no. I know, but I'm saying we already approved the job description last month. The issue with the salary was was Dr. Miles being petty about the slash. <laughs> That's what that was because we play word games, and right. I was just trying to ensure that we were all on the same page in what was getting ready to take place. Well, to and me, so, it really should be assistant high school, assistant principal and dean of students. That's both of them, you know, together. This, so it's the slash different. don't need to be, it need to be an and instead of the slash. Because it's going to be a dean of students on this salary schedule and the high school assistant principal. But is that the same person or is that two people? I'm still that's asking gonna the same be two, That's going to be different people. It's going to be the two high school principals that, that we're going to have and the dean of students. So that's, that's not what Dr. That, Williams is saying. She's saying happened. the assistant that's principals exactly are 11 months and not 12 months. So they're not going to be on this salary schedule. And she's also saying that it's going to be the assistant principal and dean of students. She's saying it's the same person. So I'm asking, is this two different people? That was my question last month. Is this two different bodies or is this one body with two titles? Well, I'm sorry. I had left up the... Uh, I didn't know the questions. I'm sorry. I didn't because I would have had those answers, but I didn't know because I left at the uh, <laughs> executive session before. Dr. So Dr. Matt. Williams, I don't, I don't. Oh, okay. Mr. Uh, Somebody's um, calling my name. Uh, this is, yeah, this is Brett Larkin. It will be two different people. One will be a um, will be the 12 month assistant principal, and the other is the dean of students. But they both the pay will be the same. They so we can. Oh, then we're gonna have three APs. With 12 and two, I'm going to be on 12 months and one, I'm going to be 11 months. Where's the no, equity no, in that? No, man. What we had talked about originally was to the one coach, the one that is only 11 months now, to, it will require board action to move him to 12 months. But we couldn't do that unless you all approve the 12 month salary matrix because right now he's only. Oh, okay. So if you move him to 12, if you move him to 12 months, I mean, we're going to increase the salary or it's going to. Like the other person, you're going to let it stay the same. No, man, we would. The How they maxed out or something. That you would, know, that whatever, would. whatever the excuse was. Miss O, Miss O, O. Let's move forward, Miss O. What I'm moving say, forward, but, I, but I'm but i just speaking of, of equity. That's my problem, right? That equity. You always talk, she's always talking about equity, but equity doesn't exist when it comes to certain situations. Okay. Um. So what you saying, Mr. Law? Go ahead, Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Law. Offer some clarity on on what that what this particular salary matrix is for. Okay. So he's basically uh, saying there, what I was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there is there a motion? I think did we already have a motion uh, to approve this the salary? So for clarity. Clarity. These are two different people. <laughs> right. Right? Correct. Yes. So, so for clarity, why, why don't you just put the, the, the salary matrix different? One say assistant principal and the other one say dean of students. Well, I don't think that's the right. issue. I think having the salary schedule this way is fine. I think right. our question has been answered by Mr. Larkin right. that every AP at Selma High is going to be on this salary schedule, basically. Is that correct? Right. If board approved, I mean, you all would have to approve moving eleven month an eleven month person to the twelve month, but we we couldn't even consider that without having the actual salary matrix. Okay. So, Ms. Wooten, that's what I, I wasn't saying that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were still a little confusing. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, all right. Is, there, is there a motion to uh, to approve this? This 12 month assistant principal and dean of student salary matrix. Is there a motion? Oh, so moved, Mr. Miles. I'm sorry. I was trying Thank to. Thank you. It's been moved by Dr. Miles, second by Ms. Wooten. All right. All ready for the vote? Dr. Miles? Yes, sir. Thank you. Ms. Wooten? Yes. Ms. Hauser? Yes. Ms. Omano? Upstain. Uh, and I'm a yes. All right. <sighs> Is there a uh, <laughs> motion to move it to the 
No, <laughs> uh, I just I'm having a little back pain, y'all. I just I'm just I w I wasn't feeling well today, so I'm just struggling a little bit. Uh is there a motion to move into executive session? So moved. Is there a second? Second Hauser. Okay. Question. All right. Question. Question Mr. We moving into executive session four. What reason? What reason? Uh, was it just on the agenda in case we needed to go in? Oh, there? I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I apologize. I apologize. No, okay, let's not be going to executive. Yeah. yeah. Let's, the request. You need executive session, Doc. Uh, I don't. I, I don't need. I one. want. I I want to go into executive session. I want to ask a question. And this is. Uh, and I, and I can't to, call anybody's name. Okay. This, so this would be in regard to uh, good, good what, name and character. Good name and character. All right. General reputation. <laughs> General okay. reputation. All in favor, please state yes. 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 Okay. Oh, for three minutes. Three yes. minutes. Three minutes. All right. So uh, Courtney Washington is the co-host. So Courtney, will you be able to put us into breakouts and not record us? <laughs> Or do you need to stop recording? I'll have to, I'll have to stop, stop recording. recording. And Attorney Campbell as well. So the five board members, me and Attorney Campbell, please. Mr. Moss, I think I just sent you one, and Dr. Williams, I'm about to send you. Okay. I didn't get it yet if you sent it. Oh, I got it. No, that's not it. <laughs> For some reason, I can't see you. Can't see me? Mm-hmm. To add you, give me just a second. You see me yet? Okay. All right. All right. Um, is there a motion to come out of the executive session? So moved. Okay. So second. 
Second. Yeah, second. Okay, moved by Dr. Miles, seconded by Ms. Hauser to come out of executive session. All in favor, please state yes. 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 All opposed? During executive session, there was no action taken. Um, is there a recommendation, or I'm sorry, is there a motion to approve the personnel recommendations? So, Hauser. So, second. second. The move by Ms. Hauser, second by Dr. Miles to approve the personnel recommendations. Uh, Ms. Wooten. Um, I am a yes, and I abstain on 3.1. And hold on, let me get to it. Um, where is it? I don't see it. Maybe it came off. Dr. Williams, those um virtual academy teachers, are they on here? Get it? Yeah, they're, they're on the second personnel report. They're on the second one. The, the report. So which one are we approving? We're approving we're the approving first one. The, um, we've got two okay, separate. So just, so they're on okay, the I'm just abstaining on 3.1. Okay. I mean, wait, not three point. Yeah, three point one. Sorry. You have to clarify what's the first one and what's the second one, y'all. We we are approving the first personnel recommendation. Is first. it the one that does not say anything, Mr. Moss? Is it the one about not, or is it the no. one we're talking about the summer school people? Which one is it we're approving? Because the, what the, the, the one the, the one not. that says not it says uh, personnel recommendations to not specific. That's so I'm asking you, what are we approving? Are we on Knox? Or are we on the we're on the 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 person the first one, the personnel okay. recommendation. Yeah, the first one. Yeah. The one with the green stuff on. Right, right. Okay. All right. So you said 3.1. Ms. O. Uh I abstain on 4.6. Okay. Yes, on everything else on this one. Okay, Dr. Miles. Okay, it's gonna take me a minute. Uh, here I go. Give me a minute. Okay. I'm a no on 4.1, 4 4.4, 4 4.5, 4.7. 4 4.2. Dr. Miles, you're going too fast. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Brown. Hold on. I can go back. I'm a no on 4.1, 4 4.4, 4 4.5, 4.7, 4.25. 4.26, 4 4.28, 4 4.29, and 4.30. You're a no. Let me confirm to 4.1, 4.4, 4.5, 4.7, 4.25, 4.26, 4.27, 4.28, 4.30. Yes, ma'am. And so that the people in the meeting will know that I have not lost my mind. I don't even know these people. I'm voting no to the amount of money like I did with the first time because it's not necessary um, that amount of money. So that's what I'm voting no to. So don't tell the people I voted no on them. I voted no on the amount of money. Yes to the remainder? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes to everything else. Mrs. Tyler? I'm a yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the personnel recommendations? Uh, not specific. A move. Is there a second? Second. All right. Questions? Uh, Ms. Ms. Hauser? Yes. Ms. Wooten? Um, I'm a yes, and I am abstaining on, um, hold on, let me see. I am abstaining on, I just had it, I'm sorry, K1.8, and I am abstaining on K1.20. Okay. Mrs. Wooten, I mean, I'm sorry, that's, sorry, Ms. Wooten, I'm sorry, Mrs. Um, Ms. Omano. 
I'm going to abstain on the entire list for Knox. Dr. Miles. That would be a yes. And I'm a yes. Personnel for not specific approved. Uh, job descriptions of salary matrix, PC, uh, tech coordinator, and internal audits and fiscal support coordinator. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by? Miles. Dr. Miles, second. Is there a second? Hauser, second. All right, it's been moved by Dr. Miles, seconded by Mrs. Hauser. Questions? Here now, are ready for the vote? I have a, I'm sorry, okay. I have a question. I have a question. Ms. Ms. Wooten, go ahead. Um, for this classified coordinator, is this just a change or is this new? So these will be new positions for approved for the actual positions when we're um, ready to advertise or hire for them. And it's to provide some additional support for the technology department as well as the finance department. So this classified coordinator, what is that? That's a new um, salary schedule because right now we don't have any um, employees that fit under that category. Um, so these are coordinator positions and um, the coordinator uh, salary schedule for classified is new to um, have a salary schedule for these positions. Is this, is, so is this a central office employee or is this a school level employee? Uh, oh, there will be central office. The PC tech coordinator will report to Mr. Coleman and the internal audit and fiscal support coordinator will report to uh, Mrs. Harris. And what about this classified coordinator? That's just the arch overarching title for both of them. They're both coordinators um, and classified. So the classified coordinator is the, the kind of the big umbrella that they both fall under in terms of the salary schedule. My only concern here is when we went and, you know, when we went back to when we right sized and we kind of reorg the central office, you know, we were told that we were reorganized because we did not need as many of those positions at the central office. Um, and so, you know, just in the last month or two, we've added almost, well, maybe not added because some of them were combined. But my point is we've added even more positions in the last two months. Ah, and I'm yeah. just, what was that? I said we're getting top heavy again. Yeah, so I, I'm just a little, and I, I'm not saying it's not needed. It possibly is needed. I'm just saying that previously we were told that we did not need all those positions at the central office, and that's why we did the reorg. But now it's like we're going back and adding positions, but with just new titles. And so that's kind of where my concern is. And then, you know, of course, I keep, I keep saying we need to get some math specialists, we need interventionalists, like we need more people on the ground in our classrooms mm -hmm. um, for instruction and support of our students. And so um, what you're referring to was nearly four years ago at this point, and we actually eliminated um, one of the roles that we had within the finance department. Um, and things have shifted, you know, with the amount of funding that we have coming in and the uh, the amount of, um, of work that uh, Mrs. Harris has right now, she definitely needs um, someone at a coordinator level who is able to understand the audit process and really support in a way that's different from the positions that we currently have. And the same for the PC Tech, because right now, if Mr. Coleman is not there, um, then there are a wide variety of um, tasks that don't get accomplished uh, because of the positions that we do currently have. And as we move into more innovative technologies, um, we need uh, the tech support to support him so that we can continue to, to thrive and to move forward uh, with innovation um, within our technology department as well as within our finance department. Dr. Miller, you still, the children were out of school over a year. You still need some boots on the ground, somebody to work directly with these students to help them. And I'm asking you, 
as you you know look into all these positions let's let's get some interventionists uh some people to help these children to pull them up because they are behind they were behind before the pandemic pandemic so you know it's even worse now yes ma'am that's next i'm glad you brought that up we'll make sure we've got math coaches and interventionists on future um, personnel reports but i'm saying you know don't keep focusing so much on people at the top when we need this uh, boots on the ground to help pull these children up. See, this, this, is a, this is a lot of money that we're spending and we have, we're not getting the results that we want. We still, the average ACT score 14. And then you wonder why but, some children don't okay. get a scholarship. You can't get a scholarship with a 14 well, ACT. I think Ms. I think Ms. Harris, um, um, when I spoke with her, I think she, she, like you said, there's a lot of money coming in and she really needed someone to, to help her in, in, in that regard. And so that's why I think that this is coming from. And interventionists as well as math coaches are part of um, what we're looking at for our ESER funding. Um, ESER 2 um, interventionists and math coaches for um, ESER 3 funding. So that's next. So you will definitely see job descriptions and some recommendations within the personnel report um, over the next two meetings uh, for those areas. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Moss. Yes. Um, oh, what is Mr. Coleman's title? If he's not the, what is, I thought Mr. Coleman was the, see, this, this, this was, we have all these different directors and coordinate. Why can't this person just be, why can't we just have a technology tech or whatever uh and not be a coordinator why do we have to have all these different coordinators and because see, see when y'all attach all these different names then along comes more money because of what y'all have named it um no, we're losing fun on really to their responsibility because in talking to mr coleman and to mrs harris we all agreed that they needed someone who was doing a little more than the current positions that they have. And so to your point, we do have the technicians, um, but Mr. Coleman needs someone who can be his, truly be his right hand and to pick up immediately and be able to serve within his position if he's away for a two day workshop. Mr. Coleman never gets to take time off. He never gets um, even to go to workshops. And even when he does, I'm bugging the heck out of him because there are so many aspects of his job that only he can do. And the same thing with Mrs. Harris. Um, and they both deserve and need some additional support um, so that their departments can function um, at a higher level. Mr. Coleman has Jesse. I understand that, but um, there should be someone because, and I guess maybe we might need to know what Mr. Coleman's job description is. I've spoken with Ms. Harris about her person. And so my question to her was, uh, I guess that she needed an assistant CSFO. Uh, so, uh, and I do realize we do have more funds coming into the district. I, I realize that, but we need to, as Ms. Wooten say, we're bringing more people back into central office because these ESSER funds, they're going to leave us. And when they leave us, we need to be able to sustain. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to, because three years, these people cannot get tenure if you're hiring them on ESSER funds. When the ESSER funds are gone, those positions and people are gone. So we need to be cognizant of that fellow board members. And um, we just need to maybe look at some of these names that we're giving these people so that our funding won't, you know, it'll be spent in a way um, that's uh, reasonable and necessary. Mm -hmm. I agree. So Dr. Williams, um, I'm sorry, hold on one second. You can keep going, Ms. Doctor. Um, we need to at this point we need to vote if yet you don't have another question. Uh, well, I do. I thought Dr. Miles was still going. Go ahead, go so ahead. my question: um, these two positions, I know you're saying we need them based on the demand that we're going to have in the next few years. So are these positions going to be um, considered in the batch of positions that are covered under? Um, you know, with the, with the, what's the word? Not disclaimer, but based, I'm going to use disclaimer with the disclaimer that, you know, this position may not be funded past the three-year time period. 
Well, our, our goal is to um, look at the current positions, and Mrs. Harris and I had a great conversation about, you know, if we were to have some anyone who were to retire or um, anything of that nature within the department, we could make some additional shifts based on that. Um, so, um, I mean, we're not calling them temporary positions, if that's what you're asking, um, but some additional shifts. I mean, this this is something that we, we have to do over time. And like I said, that initial org chart when we were looking at downsizing, that was four years ago, and a lot has changed since then. Um, and so it may be another three or four years before we're um, back at the table doing this again, but it will happen again as needs shift. So um, you know, they're not necessarily temporary positions, um, but they certainly could be uh, replacing other positions that may phase out um, as we have people who um, resign or retire and that sort of thing. And I guess at this time, what I'm saying is that given your rationale, you know, you based it, because if we were just looking at our school system in general, you know, our enrollment continues to decline. So, you know, just like we're closing schools, there would be no reason for us to just keep adding positions if we're basing it on our, you know, normal trends. But because of the funding that's coming in, I see why you're saying we need someone to do internal audits and, and fiscal support. But I'm saying when that funding leaves and kind of what Dr. Miles was saying in terms of sustainability, you know, I just wondered if if those disclaimers could be placed in these job descriptions, because from the rationale, they're needed because of the additional funding we're going to be receiving over the, over the next three years. Yeah, and I guess that's something that we could discuss if we're hiring someone, um, you know, but we can't even move forward with that unless we actually have the job description. Um, so I, I do see your point. And, you know, if we were to go ahead and post these positions and look at filling them, then I certainly think that will be part of the conversation as we look at the folks that would be in those positions that will be recommended for those positions. And so, um, like I said, I know I'm calling it a disclaimer. But what is the technical name for what I'm speaking of? So uh, typically it's like grant funded or uh, I know you typically do that with grant funded positions. Um, but I, I wouldn't know the, the technical name for that. Um, okay, well, I guess what I'm gonna do is I'll um, move that we approve the stated positions with the disclaimer um, that the positions may go away after three years. Second. Can we do that? It's been, uh, is that, it, can we do that, Attorney Campbell, or is that, Attorney um, Campbell on here? Attorney Campbell, you muted. Oh, you saying, you saying yes? Yes, I, I was having difficulty getting <laughs> yeah. unmuted. Uh, <laughs> But yes, uh, you can put the disclaimer and I strongly encourage you to do so. Okay, all right. All right, We're, there's a motion, uh, Ms. Wooden made the motion, uh, seconded by Mrs. Omanu. Questions? Okay. Uh, Ms. Wooten? Yes. Ms. Omanu? Yes. Dr. Miles? Yes. Mr. Hauser? Yes. And I'm a yes. Uh, tough descriptions approved. Uh, reminders. Uh, summer conference, June 19th, Juneteenth. Father's Day is June 20. Happy Father's Day to all the dads, grandpas, papas, and whatever you your call. If there's nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Thank you. All right, everyone have a safe and enjoyable evening. Thank you for attending. Mean adjourn. <laughs>